Welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MBA webinar. My name is Helen Spiropoulos. I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the UK is Dr. Kiran. Uh, good evening to you, Dr. Kiran. Good evening, Helen. It's great to be here with everyone. Okay, good. And uh, I can see that most of you have actually joined us um, from the Middle East um, as well as in Africa. So it's actually great to see um, quite a lot of people from different areas. Um, how we are going to conduct uh, the webinar this evening is I'm just briefly going to introduce you to Stafford and what our role is. And then I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran, who's going to take you through the program and explain the details thereof. I'm then going to open the portal for you to type out any questions that you may have for Dr. Kiran. I am going to be looking through these questions quite carefully. A lot of the questions are uh, very similar, if not identical. So I am going to start grouping them together. Um, so please do listen out for your question and also that very important answer. Okay, so let's get started. Right, so who is Stafford Global? Well, Stafford Global was established in 1993 and we are a resource centre for six UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University. Now, what that means is we have a team of dedicated and experienced academic consultants who will take you through the entire application process and make sure that you get that very important unconditional offer. So the mere fact that you're here this evening with us means that you have spoken to one of our academic consultants. Um, we do also offer a variety of programs, ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, right through until doctorates. So we really do have a variety of programs that would suit your personal as well as your professional needs. And uh, we do also have a dedicated administration department that also is in touch with the students throughout their studies as well. Okay, so I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Karan and I will be joining you towards the end of the presentation. Over to you. Thanks, Helen. And as I said, it's great to be here today uh, with you all uh, and to talk to you about the Global Online MBA here at Edinburgh Napier University or the Global Online MBA Suite, as we have quite a few programs, um, uh, MBA programs, as you will no doubt know, with different routes. So we're going to go through those today. I'm going to talk to you about Edinburgh and Edinburgh Napier, why Edinburgh Napier is, is a great university to study with. And I'll talk to you a little bit about the practicalities associated with studying on the Global Online MBA. So let's talk about Edinburgh first. Maybe some of you will have been lucky enough to come over here. If you haven't yet, then I do encourage you to uh, to visit Edinburgh if you can. We've been voted the, the best UK city for the past three years. We're home to more tech startups and a lot more finance companies than any other UK uh, city, cities uh, other than London, of course. And we're home to the largest uh, international arts festival um, uh, in the world. And that includes, you might have heard of the Edinburgh Festival and also the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So for the entire month of August, um, the, the streets are filled shoulder to shoulder, literally, with people um, all descending upon Edinburgh. And it's a really, really great um, time to be there if you can uh, come and uh, manage to get a hotel room at the time. So within uh, Edinburgh, uh, on the outskirts, within the suburbs, we have three campuses uh, that comprise Edinburgh Napier University. So we have over 19,000 students from more than 130 countries. We're truly a, a global uh, and international organization university um, that includes staff and students. So we really have um, the best of the best from all over the world lending us their own uh, cultural values and cultural uh, outlooks uh, and really making a, a diverse mix um, and a great learning environment as well because we get to learn from all these other cultures and, and backgrounds. Of those uh, over 19,000, we have 13,500 studying on campus in Edinburgh, uh, but a third then you'll see are studying at partner universities worldwide and online, like yourselves would be um, if you join us here for the Global Online MBA. So I have taught, for example, myself, I taught in uh, Singapore and in Hong Kong. I've also taught online to students all around the world as well. So really good to hear from, from everyone and to, to reach out to everyone across the world. As you can see, we're kind of a well-oiled machine when it comes to the online 
um, online teaching and learning. Of course, a lot of universities have had to adapt to that recently due to the pandemic, but we've been doing that for quite a few years now as well. So we have that infrastructure and, 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 and team and staff set up there to, to help with online learning. In terms of views on Edinburgh Napier, don't just take my word from it. There have been uh, rankings and, and good reviews for Edinburgh Napier. We're a number one million plus modern university for business management from the Complete University Guide. We're a top, uh, top five UK modern university for accounting and finance. For example, if we have any uh, accountants that will want to join us. Uh, we have a top 10 UK modern university for marketing. If there's anyone who wants to do the marketing route. We're the top ranked Scottish Modern University in the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide 2020. We're a top 10 UK Modern University for business um, overall. In the 2019 National Student Survey, the HRM subject group, so that's the group to which I belong, that teach leadership, um, um, uh, talent management, um, diversity and inclusion, for example, they received 100% student satisfaction, which places as number one in the UK out of all institutions in the UK offering HRM. We have five QS stars for teaching, employability, and internationalization. Uh, internationalization, unsurprisingly, given our, our international outlook. Also, employability as well, the value add that you get once you study with us at Edinburgh Napier, how much that contributes to you towards your own career. We're top 10 in the UK for graduate employability, uh, and we have HR Excellence in Research Award. And the Business School in 2019 had an overall, uh, in the National Student Survey, overall student satisfaction of 84%. So a really, really strong result there in the National Student Survey. So that's Edinburgh and that's Edinburgh Napier. And uh, I hope I've, I've, I've whetted your appetite for studying with us somewhat. So now I know you're all interested in the MBA. So I'm going to talk to you about the MBA and the different uh, routes and um, uh, expertise uh, within that MBA suite. So no matter what career you're hoping to go into, there's bound to be some type of MBA here that will help you um, will help you achieve your goals and will add value to your own career. So I'll talk to you first about the MBA general route. So this is the general route, um, and that has a core a set of core modules. And then you'll see those modules in blue, managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategic management. Those modules will be swapped out um, for another two modules depending on what, what, what route you want to take. And then to achieve an MBA, then you have to undertake a research skills for manager module and an MBA project. So very briefly, before I start talking about the modules, let's talk about the exit points. Now, hopefully you'll join us for the entire MBA. That, that is uh, what, we, what we hope from you. Uh, but if, for example, circumstances change or you want to exit a bit early, there are different exit points um, and you will receive different awards depending on the amount of credits that you get. So you'll see each of these modules, except for the project module, is 20 credits. So if you exit after doing an individual module, you'll carry, uh, you'll get a, those individual modules carry an award. So you'll have um, an award saying that you say, for example, completed marketing and building high performing organizations. If you do three of those modules, so let's say you do management and organizational change, leading strategic decision making, and marketing and building high performing organizations, you will achieve a postgraduate certificate if you leave after that. If you stay with it a bit longer and do six uh, of those modules, so that's six modules minus the research methods and the, the project mo uh, uh, module, uh, you will have a postgraduate diploma. And then once you finish your MBA project and you've, you've done your research skills for managers module, you will then achieve 180 credits and you'll graduate with an MBA. So let's go through briefly through the core modules on the MBA general route. Hopefully, I'm, I'm talking very fast here. Hopefully, you can uh, you can keep up with me. Of course, uh, we do have time for questions afterwards. So the MBA general route um, is comprised of these four core modules and then these two compulsory modules on the general MBA, as you'll see in blue. Management and organizational change is a, is is about managing the change that happens within organizations. Now, obviously, change is a is a constant within all organizations in the last two years with the pandemic, with the move online, for example, with different working practices, with um, different uh, building infrastructures, um, and and resources being being brought in. Um, but really. The only constant within it, organizations is change. Change is always occurring. If your organization isn't changing in some way, it's probably going to die quite soon. Um, change is always going to be occurring in organizations in terms of service development, um, in terms of product development, moving into new markets, moving into marketing campaigns, uh, segments, etc. So how do we manage that? What is the role of the manager within an organizational change initiative? We know that employees are often very hesitant when it comes to change. How does a manager manage that? 
The next module, leading strategic decision making, is what we call a hybrid module because it is half about strategy. So you will maybe have uh, looked at strategy before, making those strategic decisions, and also half about leadership. So the study and theory of leadership. So for example, charismatic leaders versus transactional leaders um, and different theories about leadership. So that's kind of a half and half a hybrid module. And we look at how leadership impacts on strategic decision-making within universities. Next one is also a hybrid module. That's marketing and building high-performing organizations. You can probably tell from the, the title, there is a marketing element. There's also an entrepreneurship element as well. So when you're building a high-performing organization, uh, once it's built, how do you market that? What is the marketing component within that organization? Another hybrid module. Global business, economics, and finance then, connecting the finance within your organization to the global business environment, to the global uh, economic environment. So a bit of macroeconomics, a bit of microeconomics, um, and also looking at the accounting and finance within the organization itself. As I said then, the two blue modules are compulsory only on the general MBA. These will be swapped depending on what, uh, what uh, route you, that you take, um, or you can stay with the general MBA route. If you do, you'd be studying managing innovation, so looking at innovation, creativity um, within the organization. Again, not just restricted to product innovation, which is what a lot of people think about when they think about innovation. They think about Apple and, and then Microsoft and then and, and Google are coming up with all these different products. Uh, but really, innovation can be applied to anything within the organization. For example, the, the services uh, that you provide to your customers, uh, the processes within your organization, anything to make your organization more efficient um, and, and, um, and uh, more effective in its role. Contemporary issues and strategic management then is one of these constantly updating modules. So the, the module leader and the tutors involved in that, this, uh, this module will be coming up with uh, really modern uh, uh, and up-to-date topics uh, relevant to strategic management. So obviously the pandemic will be one of those uh, modules. How has the pandemic uh, will be one of those topics, I should say. How has the pandemic impacted on strategic management within organizations? What changes have occurred? Um, so things like that, so up-to-date topics. Research skills for managers then is a core module, no matter what route that you're on. Um, and that's basically giving you um, the tools and um, uh, the theories available that can help you to pull off a research project. So some of you might have done some research before, you might have done a mini miniature research project, now this is going to be quite a big scale uh, research project. It's an MBA project. So we want to be you to be comfortable in actually being able to do this research project. So we'll teach you things like quantitative research versus qualitative research. Quantitative research is your statistics, your frequencies, your numbers. Qualitative research is things like words, uh, stories, feelings, perceptions. So depending on what uh, topic you're doing, you might want to do a statistical analysis or you might want to go and talk to people, uh, for example, in your own workplace to get their feelings or their ideas or their opinions about different things. Um, if you're marketing, you might want to do a focusing group. If you're doing a diversity and inclusion project, you might want to talk to people individually. So depending on the topic, you'll probably take a different research design. And this module is all about teaching you what research design is most appropriate for your own topic. Then once you've done that uh, research skills for managers module, you're gonna then be equipped to be able to, to, to pull off your own MBA project. And so that can be to do with your own organization. Maybe uh, you have a quid pro quo with your own organization. Um, they have a problem that needs fixing and you can do a project that'll help to fix or address that problem. Or it could be something um, entirely unrelated to your organization, maybe for your future career that you're interested in. I always tell my, my students, my dissertation students, to pick something that they're really, really interested in because as you'll see, um, it's a trimester long project that you'll be doing and it, it takes time and it takes effort. So it's better to do something that we're really interested in. So those are the modules that are available on the MBA general route. You'll see four of those um, core modules and then the research skills for manager managers in the MBA project are all available on the different routes. Uh, and then the blue modules that you'll have here, the managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategic management will be swapped out according to what route you want to take. So let's look at the route. Uh, and these are the different specialized modules. So let's say you want to do the MBA in banking. Well, for that then, you would do these four core modules that I've already talked about. And then before you go on to your research skills for managers and MBA project, you'll then uh, study global finance and you'll look at financial markets, institutions and banking. If, for example, you want to do the MBA in HRM, you take contemporary HRM and HRM in an international context. Um, again, you're specializing your MBA 
according to whatever uh, topic or subject that you're, that you're most in, interested in, the one that will add most value to your own career. And so you'll see then we have things like the MBA in events management. So we're in a specific, um, there's not many universities that would do uh, an MBA in events management, but you can see, as I said, we have our industry practitioners um, who have are both lecturing with us, but also work at things like the Edinburgh Arts Festival. So you're getting uh, practitioner experience as well. MBA hospitality and tourism management, obviously then benefit, benefiting again from our uh, International Arts Festival, um, MBA in finance benefiting from all those financial and, and fintech uh, startups that are available in the, in the capital of Scotland. So those are the MBA specialised modules. As I said, you slot those into the MBA general route to get your own particular, uh, your own particular route. Okay, hopefully you're all still with me. Uh, we're going to talk now about the, at the ENU global online programs, what they look like in practice. You might have some questions about, well, if I do choose to study with Edinburgh Napier, what will that look like for me? What will that look like in practice whilst, for example, I manage my career or I have caring responsibilities or even both? Um, we do try and make flexibility the kind of core component of all these programs so we want you to be able to study at a time a place and a pace that suits your own personal and professional demands so how do we do that well it's all embedded within the design of the program or 100 online um, and it's 100 asynchronous so you do all your lectures um, uh, you study all your lectures and you look at all the lecture material and the additional resources uh, online it's asynchronous though, so instead of actually going to a virtual lecture and having the lecturer sitting like I am and, and talking to you um, uh, online but also in real time, they're asynchronous. So what will happen is the lecturer um, will upload materials, the lecture materials in advance. You can then watch them um, as, as like, a, like a YouTube video in your own time um, and place and pace that suits yourselves. Uh, we have high quality materials, they're engaging, they're interactive and they're self-directed. So it's not just that you're, you're listening to the lecture, talk on and on and on. There's also additional uh, interactive material that you can engage with to really, really test your understanding of the theories that have been presented in the lectures. It's a truly, like I said, an international student experience because you will be, um, you will be uh, in a class with people from all around the world. And we have recently started up an ENU LinkedIn um, uh, MBA alumni and current students um, group where you can actually um, engage with your classmates um, on, a, on a more personal basis. Uh, we have three intakes per year. There's January, May, and of course, September, uh, our current in intake. In terms of assessment then, so what does assessment look like? It's not a usual assessment that you would think of when you think about going to university where you have assignments and, and a lot of deadlines during the trimester. Again, it's about flexibility. It's about you being able to manage your workload um, according to your own personal and professional needs. So the assessment might look a bit different from what you're used to, what you might expect. You'll be provided with both formative feedback and summative assessments. Formative feedback, just to use some pedagogical terminology, formative feedback is that constructive feedback that, that your tutors will give you. Um, for example, if you want, have a, a draft of an essay that you want your tutor to look at, they'll look at that and they'll give you some formative feedback, some ideas for improvement, some things that you did really, really well, um, from some formative feedback that will help you to, um, to become better at, at what you're doing. Then there's the summative assessments, and these happen, um, as we'll see, uh, at the end of each unit and then at the end of the module. So the summative assessments, those are the grades. Those are the, the, what we usually think about when we think about assessments. How is that divided? Well, we have an end of unit progress test. That's 10 academic units with online questions at the end of each unit. We roughly say uh, we give that for the end of each week um, if you're doing it over the 13 week trimester. But again, it's up to you what pace you want to go with that. These will test your knowledge and understanding of the key concepts within each unit and they count as 10% of your final module mark. However, then with 90% left over, the end of module assessment is worth that 90% of the total module mark. And depending on what uh, module you're taking, that end of module assessment is going to look a bit differently. So if you're taking leading strategic decision making, for example, that might be more of an essay or a report, more a written assessment. If you're doing a, a global business economics and finance, that might be more of a, of a statistical analysis or more of a financial analysis. Um, again, depending on what lecture 
uh, what lecture module it is and what lecture you have as well. Um, it really is, is up to, the, to the, the specifics of the module. But it'll usually be an end of unit assessment, it'll be worth 90% of that module mark, and it'll be one complete piece of work that you then submit at the end of the trimester. Assessments will be undertaken online and these will be described in the approved module descriptors. If you do have any questions that, were, that you, you, you think of after this webinar, then do look at the module descriptors. They're all online on the ENU website. And as part of the quality assurance process, just a disclaimer, the module leaders will sample a number of summative assessments. So we'll look at some of the end of module assessments and portfolios just to check that the work submitted is that of the student themselves. So we're basically checking that there's no plagiarism. Um, and just as a disclaimer, if if there is any, uh, you know, if, if the module leader does suspect some plagiarism, hopefully not, but if they do, uh, then you might have to undertake um, an online viva. So that's a, a moral exam in lieu of the, um, of the written work, okay? So that's what the assessment looks like, again, all the uh, end of unit progress tests, you can do those at your own pace. And then at the end of each trimester, then you will have that 90% end of module uh, assessment. Looking briefly now at how the trimesters are, are divided. So we have trimesters rather than semesters. Um, some, some universities use trimesters like us. So our academic year is divided into three trimesters of 13 weeks each. So trimester one starting, for example, in January, April, for you guys, if you're starting in September, your trimester one will be obviously in September. But let's say if you're starting in January, you'll have module one and two, the, both of those 20 credit modules. Trimester two then, it's the same again, uh, for May to August, 20 credit modules, two of them. So you're doing two modules um, at once. We find that that is usually the, the best uh, amount of work that one can do while still managing their professional and personal demands. Trimester three then, you'll have those remaining two uh, 20 credit modules. For the next trimester then, trimester four will get you to do your research skills for manager module just to concentrate on that um, and uh, and prep you for the project. And then the last trimester then, that is when you do the project and that's obviously worth 40 credits uh, and there's a lot of work involved in that so we want to make sure that you have the, the time and the space and the capability to do that. In terms of each trimester then, in week one, you'll have access to the module materials on the virtual learning environment. So we use Moodle, some of you might be familiar with Moodle. Uh, you also have your online induction with myself uh, and you'll commence the studies. In weeks two to 12, you'll have the module study. So again, self-directed, self-paced at your own time um, and you're fitting it in with your own commitments. Um, there will be nobody checking to make sure that you have, uh, have um, you know, done this or have uploaded this or submitted this. It's really on your own time. It's as flexible as, as, as you want. Within week 13 then, that is the submission of your final assignment. And again, that could be an essay, that could be a report, an academic report. Um, um, it could be a business report, a business executive summary. It could be a financial analysis, a statistical analysis, whatever the, the module really demands of you, that'll be due within week 13. So that's what the trimester outline looks like. Lastly then, let's talk about the entry requirements and the fees. We require an honours degree at 2.2 or above, plus two years relevant work experience. So comparable, comparable alternative qualifications or professional qualifications and the relative relevant work experience might also be considered. Do have a conversation with uh, your staff or global agent um, who will then get in touch with me if you do have any questions about that. You might not have that honours degree, you might not have it at a 2-2, um, but you might have significant work experience. We are absolutely uh, engage in a conversation with that. Um, it's also worth noting as well that depending on what route that you want to take within your, within your um, MBA, your MBA project will be dedicated towards that route. So if you are doing the HRM MBA Global Online, then we'd expect you to do a HRM uh, project as well. I'm not sure I mentioned that, so I just want to make sure that uh, th that's mentioned. If you're doing the, the general route, of course, then you're open to doing whatever project that you really want to do in whatever field or discipline that you want. Uh, so the alternative to the MBA for those without the relevant work experience, I'll just mention that there's an MSc in business management that also starts in September and also in January as well. So there's two cohorts there. If you don't have that relevant work experience, but for example, you have the honours degree to, to um, but you don't have the work experience, you're just coming directly from university, there is that MSc, Masters in Science. 
If your first language, language isn't English, then you need to provide us evidence demonstrating that you conduct yourself in English. For example, if you've done a previous degree in English or you have the results of uh, English language tests, for example, IELTS. Um, but do, do get in touch with your Stafford Global uh, consultant with regards to English requirements. The next application deadline only in three days time, that's the 4th of September, so do get those applications in uh, and do obviously ask myself and Helen any questions right now or over email if you have any if you have any questions about that. In terms of fees, obviously get in touch with your staff or global uh, personal consultant. So I'll leave it there and I will be happy to take questions along with you Helen. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dr. Kiran. And uh, there are quite a few questions and quite interesting ones that have come through. So let us actually get through that. Okay, so the first question is regarding the logistics and supply chain management. Uh, does this particular route cover procurement and international business? Mm -hmm. I would imagine they would do both. Um, I will check that while we take more questions, actually. I'm quite sure it will cover international business because there is an international element to it, obviously. Um, procurement, I would imagine it is also covered. Uh, I'm not up to date on the, the nitty gritty of, of each of the routes, but yes, I think uh, procurement would probably be covered in one way or another throughout the modules. But let me check that while we're taking additional questions and uh, I will get back to that student. Okay, excellent. And uh, the other question is, I've noticed that uh, you do also offer an MEC. So what is the difference academically and professionally between the two master's programs? Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of, I suppose, prestige, uh, the MBA is more known for that, that uh, professional work experience element to that. So an MBA, you'd see often business leaders engaging in, in, in MBAs or people who are aspiring to be uh, MBA business leaders. But for example, if you want to go down a more theoretical route or maybe a less practical route, then the MSc is, is also an option. Really, I mean, there's not too much of a difference. It's really about what you make of it and the prestige that's associated with it. There's not too much of a difference in terms of how it's taught in the different um, the different uh, assessments that you might take uh, within, within Napier, for example. But for example, myself, I did an MSc in business management, very similar to the one that's offered. And then I obviously I went down the more theoretical academic route. So if you, if you are thinking of becoming a business academic, then the MSc might be more suitable. If you're thinking about moving into um, a leadership role or you want to take on a leadership role within your organization, then I'd say go for the MBA. So in terms of the actual module materials that you'll be covering, there's not too much of a difference, but the MBA might be suited for more uh, leadership or practical candidates, the MSc maybe towards more um, academic candidates or, or theoretical uh, candidates, or those who just don't have that relevant work experience, it is still a springboard into those leadership roles. Um, even if you don't have those th that work experience, it will come in useful later on in your career rather than immediately. Excellent. And if I were to exit with a postgraduate diploma, can I come back at some point and complete my MBA? And if so, at what point or what time frame uh, do I have to come back? Uh, there is no set time frame. We wouldn't really cut you off after a, a fair amount of time. For example, if you um, were coming from another institution and you had completed maybe half of an MBA that lined up quite nicely to our MBA, we'd offer you credit exemptions. If you have exited with a postgraduate diploma, um, then I, I don't think you are able to come back for another award. Um, but we might be able to engage some kind of conversation there with regards to that. Um, we wouldn't really give you two awards, if you know what I mean. It would be it would be one or the other. Um, so I, I I would have to check the regulations on that. But um, it is definitely. If you, that is a conversation that you want to have, then do get in touch with us. Um, and obviously with yourself, Helen, and, and, and agents at Stafford Global, um, that is uh, hopefully something that we don't want to happen. But um, if it does happen, then we could definitely, um, we can get engaged in that conversation. If, for example, you did want to defer 
um, either your offer or you're in the middle of your MBA and you think, okay, I maybe need to take a year or so out, then obviously we could we can engage in that conversation as well. Um, we know that personal circumstances arise, there's bereavements, there's there's births, there's new jobs, there's a lot of the new projects, things like that. Um, do have that conversation with us. We do try to be as flexible as possible. Um, but I believe, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, like once you exit with a particular award and you take that particular award, um, I don't believe you can come back then for the other award because it kind of counts to you, if you see what I mean. Yeah, excellent. And uh, a, a question on regarding the entry criteria. The entry criteria is that you must have a bachelor degree, but if you do hold a postgraduate certificate or a postgraduate diploma, we can also possibly look at providing uh, credit exemptions, as Dr. Kiran has said. If you are looking for credit exemptions, a learning outcomes are very, very important because it does actually make Dr. Kiran's job a lot easier to make sure that um, the modules you have completed do map with the modules offered by the university. Um, do you get in touch with your academic consultant and be able to guide you as to what documentation is uh, required to be submitted? Um, okay, and is this degree awarded by Edinburgh Napier University? Okay, yes, um, and uh, Dr. Kiran will actually agree with me. Yes, the degree does not come from Stafford Global at all. You will become a student of the university and uh, the degree is awarded by the university. And you will also be invited to the graduation ceremony. And uh, this actually leads me to the next question. Um, will the graduation be held this year or next year on the campus? Do you have any idea, Dr. Kiran? That's to you. Yes, we just got an update yesterday, I believe, and we will have our October graduation. So that's our next graduation ceremony. They will be taking place in person in, in Usher Hall here, pictured uh, in this picture. Um, those will be in person. So those are our first graduations from since uh, maybe, I believe, uh, October uh, 2019. Team. Um, so yeah, so it's really exciting for for lecturers and for academics as well, um, because we love to see you all all graduate in person. So yes, uh, is the answer that, to that. The October graduations are, um, uh, as far as we know, they are going ahead in person. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Good. That's such a good news. And um, another uh, question from Rana: How many times can I repeat a module if I fail it? So you have, uh, if you if you fail a module um, and there was no extenuating circumstances, uh, which I'll get back to in a second, um, then you would have a reassessment attempt, um, a kind of a, a one reassessment attempt. If, for uh, for example, if you had some extenuating circumstances, so let's say you might have, um, and these have obviously been um, very relevant recently, you might have had bereavements or you might have had um, maybe uh, someone that you care for has COVID, or maybe that you had COVID, maybe um, you lost your job or maybe you're starting a new project, you're very busy. If you have some extenuating circumstances, then you'd obviously be able to, to um, engage in a conversation with with the business school um, about the reassessment attempts, and you might then be able to get an additional reassessment attempt depending on that. Um, we do, as I said, we do try to be flexible with every student, not just on the Global Online MBA, uh, with regards to extenuating circumstances, and we know that there's always gonna be something going on in life. Um, so we do offer um, extensions. So if you, for example, feel that you can't complete it, but you just need a little bit more time um, to com uh, complete your assignment, uh, you need a 10 day extension, we can give that to you, or you can defer the submission of the of the, the coursework to the next, uh, the, the end of next trimester, um, or like we said, you, do, do, there is a reassessment attempts as well. Okay, and what is the marking criteria? Uh, is it a distinction, merit, a pass, or is it numerical? So we use um, kind of a, a combination really. So we do have distinctions, merits and, and passes and obviously fails, uh, but we do have a numerical marking material, material as well. Um, so for postgraduates, um, we have a, kind of a distinctive scale, distinctive to Napier, where we start with um, a D5 is the highest that you can get. That's a distinction five down to a D1. Uh, and then you go from a P5 down to a P1. So P5 being the best pass grade 
grade uh, and a P1 being the lowest pass grade. Uh, and then obviously we started with F1 going down to F5, where F5 is, or sorry, F6, which is um, with the, the worst grade that you could get. But um, usually an F6 is only awarded if the student, for example, didn't submit their assignment. So um, there is a numerical grading and those P1s, P2s, etc. those are usually associated with a percentage range as well. So no matter kind of what you're used to, if you're used to your, your percentages, then we do, you can convert them into a P1 or P2 or D1, whatever it is that you're used to. Um, and that'll obviously always be explained to you in the program handbook as well. Excellent. And what is the response rate of tutors or university support if I do send a query? Mm -hmm. So with with the, the queries, I'll say first, um, there is a range of people that you can get in touch with depending on what your query is. So if you had um, maybe an issue with choosing your, your module or, or something like that, um, you might get in touch with, with Stafford or you might get in touch with our global online uh, support team. So that's a team that's dedicated to answering your queries and supporting our global online students um, and a really, really, really efficient um, uh, bunch that they are as well. Um, if you had an academic query, just a general academic query about the program, you can get in touch with myself. If you had a query about the module material or the lecture material, you could obviously get in touch with the lecturer, the module leader um, at the lecture there, or the tutor that's assigned to you um, as well. Uh, within the next year, we're also trialing uh, PDT's personal development tutors. So if, for example, you had issues, you weren't really sure about maybe utilizing their library resources, or maybe you're just having an issue with academic writing or something like that, there's also going to be a personal development tutor who will be able to guide you. And there's more of an informal discussion uh, there. So you do have a range of people that you can get in touch with. Our working goal uh, within um, the uh, global online environment is that we would respond to you within two working days. Um, with tutors, I believe it's three working days, but usually within the same week in a way, um, obviously allowing for some of the busier times where there's a lot of marking going on or there's a lot of queries going on. You will have had some response within two to three working days, even if it's just to say, Hold on for a second, I know we'll get back to you maybe on, on, on Tuesday or on, on Wednesday. Um, we do try, try to be um, to get back to people as soon as possible in that regard. Absolutely. And um, Dr. Kiran is quite correct. There is also support from Stafford Global. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a dedicated administrative department. So once you do start your program, you will uh, be sent uh, uh, an email from our administrators so they can introduce themselves to you. And again, if you have any queries um, from an administrative uh, position, they will be able to assist. Or again, they could also get in contact with the university on your behalf. So as Dr. Kirana said, there really is quite a lot of support, whether it is academically um, or on an administrative basis. Okay, and can I start the program uh, on an online basis and then at some point decide to uh, switch to full-time on campus in the UK? Would this be permitted? So unfortunately not just because of the difference, um, both, both of them are MBAs, uh, but they are delivered differently because because one being online and one being in person so they don't actually match or blend that that well so you wouldn't actually be able to start online and then uh go in person um because of those differences and the way that the both the degrees are, are structured differently as well so it would be quite complicated quite a mess to try and to try and start online and then uh do it in person um, so that's that question and I'll just answer the other question if I may with regards to the MBA logistics and supply chain management that we had earlier on. So um, I have looked up uh, the MBA, you'll see me type in as well, um, I have looked up that MBA. Um, there is a supply chain and logistics module within that uh, within that, um, that would probably tangentially um, or uh, kind of um, indirectly discuss procurement. Procurement, I believe, isn't covered as a topic within itself. However, if you are interested in um, logistics and supply chain management and you want to do, for example, your project on, on procurement, that would obviously sit within that um, MBA, um, uh, that, that, that discipline. So you could definitely uh, do your project on procurement. And obviously there would be people there within your tutors and your academic staff your supervisor will be assigned to you who would have expertise on procurement as well. So uh, I don't believe it's uh, covered directly as a topic, but you certainly would be able to study it if you wanted to. 
Excellent. Thank you so much for coming back to us on that, uh, Dr. Kiran. The, the next question is, if I take two modules in a semester and I find that it is too much for me, can I request the university to switch back to one module? Hmm. I think this, this would be all about the timing of the module. I do believe there's a cutoff um, that, where you kind of have to make that decision. I think it's two weeks or three weeks. Um, you, uh, but you could certainly, um, you, ha you have to make that decision relatively quickly within the two or three weeks. Um, we obviously, again, try to be as flexible as possible. So um, uh, within those th th that two or three weeks, you could um, you could drop down to the one module uh, and then uh, repurchase the other module later on at a later date. Um, but yeah, I do believe that's time sensitive. So we would have to hear from you quite soon about that. Okay, and with regards to assignments, um, are they online and timed, or can we prepare them separately and then submit them through Moodle? Yes, the latter option there. So it is, again, it's all the flexibility in your own pace. Um, so your assignments, um, first of all, the, the end of unit uh, progress, tests you can do at your own time and those aren't um, necessarily monitored we'll see have you completed it and, and how well you did but we won't be telling you to do it at any certain time it's up to yourself when you want to do that your assignments are due in week 13 so if you have two modules we're doing two modules you'll have two assignments due in work, week 13 uh, and you'll be able to you'll know which assignments and what the assignment looks like really from week two um, the module leader and the tutors will go through that with you. Those materials will be available to you. And again, you can do that at any time. So you can submit a bit early if you if you like. Most people, I know like myself as a student, would submit the night before the end of week 13 probably. Most people do that and we do tend to get a lot of marking towards the end of, of week 13 and, and beyond. But you certainly submit that in your own time. You take that with you. You do that in your own laptop, your own time, your own um, office environment, whatever it is that suits you. There's no timed um, assignments. We don't actually have any timed exams, for example. Right, excellent. And that actually brings us to, to another question about examinations. Um, are there any examinations in this uh, MBA? Uh, because quite frankly, I do not like them. And the last time I did an exam was when I was at my university level. So I really don't have the time to study for examinations. Yeah, as a, and as a, I completely uh, concur with you as a as a former student. Um, you know, I I had both a degree where I did exams and a degree where and my master's degree where I didn't do exams, and I, I definitely uh, prefer the latter option. Uh, and really, this reflects a shift in thinking in terms of pedagogical thought, um, or in teaching, learning thought, and and practice with regards to the the value and the role of examination. So there may be some things that you have to learn um, off by heart, um, off road. Um, and that you then go into an exam and then you prove that you know it. However, with something like management, like an MBA degree, really it's about providing you with the tools to critically analyze and to make snap judgments, snap decisions that are informed by theories that you've learned, but you don't necessarily have to come into a, a lecture hall or an examination room and then regurgitate that on a piece of paper because that's not what the real world is like. So we want you to be good critical um, thinkers. We want you to be able to do a good critical analysis um, and give you the tools to do that. And then those assignments test your ability to critically analyze and they also help you to improve your critical analysis skills because obviously you'll be doing drafts and redrafts of, of those um, of those assignments. So for that reason, we don't have examinations. Um, you know, we could we have done in the past uh, with other um, degrees offered examinations. They are possible to do on an online environment, surprisingly. Um, but for the MBA um, Global Online, you don't have examinations. It's all assignments and your end of unit progress tests. Excellent. And another question regarding the assignments is how many word um, uh, word count? What is the word count for the assignments? So again, that would differ depending on 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 the, the actual uh, module that you're undertaking. Um, I suppose a general rule of thumb, I know for for most of of masters modules, we would say an assignment could be worth or it could be between 2,500 to 4,000 words. Again, depending on the material, usually 2,500 is quite a, a safe bet. Um, so it's not a completely onerous 
um, uh, onerous um, assessment to do, we would just expect even within that 2,500 that you um, are putting a lot of thought and critical analysis into that. However, then maybe if you're doing a, a finance module or an accounting module, you might have uh, maybe a thousand words, but you have to pre present some kind of balance sheet or some kind of um, uh, financial analysis to, to, to supplement that. Um, those words. So word count really probably isn't the best measure to use with regards to it. It's more about the amount of effort and time that goes into it. Um, and we try to obviously make that um, quite equal across all the modules. Okay, can I've noticed that um, the program will eventually be ACSB accredited. Um, when can this actually take place? I have not found any confirmation thereof on your website. Mm -hmm. So we're actually under undertaking or, or undergoing the process of, of AACSB uh, accreditation. So um, the last that I heard is that uh, within autumn, so I suppose within the next uh, couple of months, uh, we will have a visit from uh, the headquarters of AACSB. Um, they're going to come on campus and talk to the academics on campus uh, and, and enter into that process of accreditation. Then I believe then it'll be next year, hopefully if that goes well, then it'll be next year um, with a more formal evaluation um, and probably some some meetings and some scrutiny events, quality events, uh, that that's when we would hopefully then have the AACSB accreditation. But you're quite right, we don't really have that at the moment. So we don't have that at the moment, but we are engaging in that process. And we do believe that we're quite well uh, qualified to, to hold an AACSB uh, accreditation. So, um, it's more of a watch the face scenario there. True, absolutely. And a question from Nathan. Um, is there any possibility that I can take on any additional modules from any other specialization? What I mean by that is I know I have to complete X amount of modules for my MBA, but I have looked at some modules in other specializations and would like to pick them up just as of interest. Is this permitted? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we talk first about the MBA, it will be important that you would choose the module specific to your specific route. So if you are, for example, um, doing a HRM route, you would have to take those two HRM modules as well as your core modules and your project uh, and your and your research skills for manager module. However, then if you were interested, for example, uh, if you you know had an interest in in logistics and supply chain management, or maybe you want to look at HRM within tourism management, maybe that you wanted to do a tourism um, module, we could do that certainly. Um, but that would be outside of your MBA degree, so you would be able to choose an MBA. Um, uh, module, but it would be you could kind of purchase in that separately. Um, so you would have the MBA award, and then you'd have that separate award for that module as well. Um, so it's a, I suppose that's a more complicated uh, scenario. So do get in touch with with Stafford or or myself with regards to that. We can certainly enter that conversation. I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be against that. Uh, I think that's um, you know you you follow whatever that you're interested in. I think that's a good idea. Excellent. And a very interesting question that has come from John. Is there assistance from the university in assisting students to secure any jobs in the UK once this program has been completed? So we do have uh, resources available in the form of what we call the Student Futures um, Team. So the Student Future Team, Student Futures Team would um, offer you some advice with regards to getting jobs, and that could be CV preparation, um, um, building your personal development skills, things like that. So that is available to you as as an APR student as well. So with regards to that, and then. There will be probably, I, I think there is also personal consultations available that you could get in touch with one of the students' future teams who may be able to talk to you about your own personal situation as well. So we do have those resources available to you, yeah. Okay, um, I'm just going to answer a question with regards to credit exemptions. Um, there's a student that has a level five diploma. Can I get credit exemptions? And the answer to that is unfortunately not. A, a level five qualification is actually a lower than a master's qualification. So if you are looking to get any credit exemptions, you have to make sure that it is on a postgraduate level, postgraduate certificate or postgraduate diploma, which is equivalent to a UK level seven 
Okay, so anything that is level six or five, unfortunately, cannot be deemed um, eligible for any credits. Okay, do get in touch with your academic consultant and be able to guide you a little bit more about uh, what is acceptable for credit exemptions. Okay, and uh, please can you explain the induction for us? Uh, um, I am going to be starting uh, my MBA next week. I'm looking forward to it, and I have been told that there is an induction. Can you just guide us a little bit about that? Okay, great. Yeah, and uh, first of all, a warm welcome to to, to Napier, and I, I really hope you you uh, enjoy your experience here with us. Uh, so this is actually something that I'm working on this week. Um, so there are induction materials available in the form of things like um, access to the library resources and other e resources like Student Futures, for example. Um, the the kind of the role of the tutors, the role of your PDT, introducing your PDT, um, and who to talk to in terms of of the different queries that you might have. So the induction is about getting you used to and familiar with the online, global online environment here at Edinburgh Napier. So uh, again, so your resources that are available to you, your subject librarian, for example, you can get in touch with um, if you require um, a particular journal article or book that you that you can't access. Um, things like the Moodle uh, virtual learning environment. So using Moodle and, and, and how to access the different materials that are available to you. Um, things like uh, more academic things like referencing and, and plagiarism. So how do you form a reference list? How do you consult academic articles and then use that academic article within your, for example, essay or report and then reference that as well? So some people might be quite used to that if they're coming directly from uh, if they, or if they've, they've completed um, a degree quite recently. But so for some, it might be a bit rusty or some might not, not have done that at all. Um, so we're just getting everyone up to the same speed with regards to things like that. Also, things like plagiarism, like I mentioned, making sure that you're not plagiarizing um, either inadvertently or, or, or deliberately um, and, and how to avoid that using the software that's available to you to, to um, avoid plagiarism, things like that. So a lot of different um, academic, administrative and more practical aspects that are involved in that. Um, I'll also be recording a video just to, uh, just to uh, welcome you all. Um, and as, as well as that, I will have um, an online session where you will to talk to me face to face um, and ask any questions that you might have. So that's, a, that's our window. Yeah. Excellent, good. And um, just another question with regards to that MBA in logistics. When I complete that particular route, uh, do I get a membership to any association? I will have to again. This is this is a. I am a HRM scholar, so I'm not uh, completely used to the, to the to this. Uh, I don't believe there is um, an automatic. Um, uh, accreditation there, um, but I believe if you have an MBA in supply, supply chain um, and logistics, then you you'd be very well placed to get that accreditation. I don't believe, um, just looking at at the at the brochure here, that you would get an automatic um, uh, um, accreditation there, unfortunately. Okay, and um, I'm just going to answer Sam's question with regards to assessments. He unfortunately joined um, the session quite late. Um, assessments are in the form of assignments. Okay, there are no examinations in the MBA. Okay, and can I actually complete this program in 12 months? So no is the short answer there. I think um, because it's a part-time program, um, and because there is actually there are quite a lot of modules there, um, we would really rec recommend that you do at most two modules per trimester. Um, once you start um, adding on then um, to, to the modules, then you would actually have quite a high workload um, that I'm not, I'm not sure would be would be possible to most people. As well as that, we also require you to take the the uh, the the, the, the modules, the core modules and your specialist modules, we require you to take them before you do your project. Um, that's the way that the program is structured. Um, again, because if you're doing a specialist um, MBA, for example, in HRM, we would require you to do those specialist modules before you do your project in H HRM. Uh, before you do your project, in addition to that, you'd also have to take your research skills for manager module as well. So 
logistically and practically we wouldn't have, you wouldn't actually be able to fit that all within that 12 months uh, the project itself as well takes an entire trimester um, and that is something that you really needed to be focused on and dedicated to so uh, unfortunately it wouldn't be possible within 12 months okay and um, just a question on the English criteria um, please do get in touch with your academic consultants. There are various ways to actually meet the English requirement. Um, and we do look at each application um, on an individual basis. So we will look at your degree, um, et cetera, et cetera. So please do get in touch with us and we'll be able to give you a variety of options. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, are there any costs to consider um, for uh, this program? For example, are there any extra resources, extra time or graduation fees that I need to worry about? Uh, I believe there's no uh, additional costs to, to, to my mind. There may be, um, I, I believe even with graduation, I think, um, the, the most probably cost that you might have, you might have to rent the graduation robes um, because that is actually with an, with an outside company um, that that, uh, that that rent out the graduation robes. So I think that is one small additional cost. I believe it's uh, it would be under fifty pounds um, from what I can remember. Um, in terms of additional resources like textbooks or, or journals, or certainly we wouldn't expect you to buy anything like that. Um, if you wanted to um, supplement your learning with a textbook. Um, then you know certainly you could see if it's available on the library website. If not, then you could buy it in person. But you're by no means um, obligated to do to do so. We try to um, include all the fees within that um, that upfront fee that you that you see um, when you're purchasing your modules. Okay, and a question on the graduation. I'll quickly answer that. Yes, um, if you cannot attend the graduation, um, your degree certificate can actually be posted to you. You will just need to get in touch with the graduation department um, and they'll be able to assist you. And so you can have it um, sent to you. Okay, um, a sample certificate of the degree, yes. Um, we do actually have a sample certificate, so please do get in touch with your academic consultant. We'll be able to show you what your degree certificate will look like once you have uh, officially completed the program. Okay, so I have managed to actually put all the questions together. Great, there's just one last question from Tembi. Yes, we are going to be sharing this video with you, so please do expect to get that from me um, tomorrow. So I'll definitely be able to share that with you. Now, um, just one last thing, as uh, Dr. Kiran has said, uh, we've just got a couple more days um, for the semester applications to close, particularly for the sub September cohort. Please do get in touch with us urgently we can assist you to get those applications into the university by the 4th of September and so that you can obviously start your program anytime between the 6th and the 15th of September. Again thank you so much Dr. Kiran for being with us it was wonderful and again thank you everyone for joining us what wonderful questions this evening it was lovely having you with us please do get in touch with us and let's get you into this September cohort and get an unconditional offer for you. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me. Have a good evening. Thanks. Goodbye. Thanks, Mary. Bye.